This is really gonna suck. This video is all about sucking. Speaking of things that suck in the shop besides me, I can't do an intro like this. Let's do the real one. I've done several good video. <sighs> I've done several good videos about dust collection, I feel like, but there's some aspects of it I've intentionally not touched because I just didn't have a good grasp on it. How much, how fast? We normally measure that in CFM or cubic feet per minute. Just kind of self-explanatory. Imagine a cubic foot, you know, one foot cubed. How many of those per minute is a system moving? How much air? It's volume. Static pressure is a little harder to find. That's the pressure or force behind that air. Your volume is always three dimensions. Now a cross section of whatever you're pulling from, this is four inch flex hose, gives you sort of two dimensions, diameter is one dimension, then pi would be your other dimension. How do we get our, our third dimension to establish volume or shape? That would be speed. So anything that kills speed kills your volume. What kills speed? Friction. Here's a cross section of my six inch pipe. You'll notice it's all smooth, so that doesn't provide much friction. Here's my flex hose, because it's flexible, but to give it some rigidity and shape, it has these wires, which gives it this ripply surface on the inside. That's gonna add a lot of friction. What else adds friction? Not being straight. Flex hose isn't great straight, then when I curly cue it up and the air's making all these direction changes in here, that's a lot more friction. It's going to kill my air speed a whole lot more. You know what would help minimize the effect of that friction on our air speed? Pressure. The harder that air's getting pushed through there, the less it's gonna get slowed down. But if we start with more pressure, we can power through more turns, or a, a rougher surface, we can power through it with less airspeed loss. And if this isn't your first dust collection video, I'm sure it's come up that the amount of air any given pipe can move grows exponentially because pi is involved in, 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 in the ratio. This four inch pipe, four is two thirds of six. So you'd think it carries two thirds of the air. It doesn't, it carries 44% of the air of this. And this two inch pipe, or two and a quarter actually, this is one third, has one third the diameter, but it doesn't carry 33% of the air, it carries 14% of the air. And let's say if you double this, go from a six inch pipe up to a 12 inch pipe, you're gonna carry four times as much air at the same speed. What's also interesting, the friction cost, the ratio of the wall to the area also changes as you go down. And of course in our shop, we can't pull our vacuums through magical frictionless tunnels. But the cost, the friction cost of each of those changes as we go down, this is just where I nerd out and, and it's so fun to me. So what we can do is measure the circumference and come up with a ratio of the circumference to the area. For one inch of open area that air can flow through on this pipe, we have 0.67 inches of wall. On the four inch pipe for every inch of area, we have one inch of wall. It's like a one to one ratio, kind of neat. On our two and a quarter inch pipe, we go all the way up to 1.78, over one and three quarter inches of wall. And then on our one and three quarter, we go all the way up to almost 2.3 inches of wall. So we're like over two inches of wall for every inch of opening. Obviously it's the wall, not the opening, that's adding the friction. So as you go smaller, your friction cost on moving that air increases. Our efficiency is killed and it becomes far less important how much air that motor can move at the impeller. What matters is how much pressure you have. We ran all those numbers as if all these are smooth pipes. These are corrugated, so it's actually even smaller on the inside, so that ratio is even higher than the optimal I measured, plus we have all that rippling, so if, if this is try what you're trying to pull through to collect your dust, it doesn't really matter how much CFM you're making, like how much pressure do you have, because that's what it takes to get through this, is high static pressure. Almost everything I have uses dual four inch ports, and I'm running big piping and have a big honking five horsepower collector. But what if all your machines don't have dual four inch ports, or, and I need a little, oh, here's my step stool or even a direct six inch port. Maybe your dust collection ports look more like the one on my baby bandsaw. There's no reason to be ashamed or embarrassed by your port size. So a lot of your machines probably have ports that look like this, just like my shop did the first, you know, five, six, seven, eight years. I, I had an intuition, but not the knowledge to think that, okay, my big honking dust collector I have running all this stuff here, is ideal for that. Well, let's say you're ready to make the investment. Should you buy one of those and think, well, I'm just buying more than I need, but I'll grow into that dust collector and I can run these tools on it until I need that. Well, actually, of the options we're gonna talk about today, 
that dust collector would be the worst performing on these tools. Our dust collectors that are run those four inch ports and higher are running high volumes, lots of air at low pressures. So the 750 is supposed to move 750 cubic feet per minute. And this pulls about six inches of water column, six inches of pressure, we'll say. This shop vac can pull like 50 to 60 inches of water column, 10 times the pressure or suction in this machine than this machine. But also take in consideration is that's at a big pipe. So if I take my big unit and I do neck that down, my CFM drops a lot, but also my static pressure does go up some because it is kind of neck down. There's a relationship there. So we're about to have some fun and take some more measurements through different hose setups to see how things change. But I'm sure at this point, you're already starting to see that if you have small ports, you're probably better off with a shot back, especially when we get into cost. You can pick up a five horsepower peak shot back for anywhere from $100 to $150 pretty much any day of the week. This Dust Right 750 right now on Rockler's website sells for $820 with an additional $100 shipping and handling charge. And then once you add your tax, you're basically looking at about $1,000 for that dude. And then my big unit is like a $3,000 unit plus about $1,500 of pipe and fittings. So we'll just run it all off and say that's like a $5,000 setup. Now, is it worth spending 10 times as much or 50 times as much if you're running through small ports on your machine? Let's get Annie out and see what happens. Let me introduce you to my helper, um, Annie, which is my anemometer, which I uh, often struggle saying. So instead, we're just going to call it any, which just measures airspeed. So when I say Rockler, I just mean dust collector. Obviously I'm trying to use it in a way it's not designed for to prove the point of, you know, when a dust collector or a shop vac should be used. Just wanna make that clear. So I measured first right at the intake on the tool. So on the Rockler, that was 510 CFM. Then when I hooked the four inch straight pipe to it, it dropped to 412 CFM at the end of the pipe, which is 80% efficiency. When I curled up that pipe, it went from 412 to 409, which really wasn't much of a drop. But when I necked that four inch pipe down to two and a quarter inch pipe, I went from 510 CFM at the machine to 95 CFM at the end of that tool, which is only 19% of the airflow it generates. So we lost 81%. When I hooked it up to the one and three quarter inch pipe, things got way worse and I dropped from 510 all the way down to 24 CFM. We lost 95% of our airflow trying to go down to that one and three quarter inch pipe. And then when I curled that pipe up, we dropped down to 18 CFM, 4%, 96% air loss. How did the rigid do? At the tool, rigid's pulling 129 CFM. So I hooked up that pipe and we're pulling in 116 CFM at the end of it. So that's 97% retention, only 3% loss at the end, which is kind of interesting. Whereas at the end of the Rockler run, we lost 20%. Um, and that's on the same size pipe that the fitting is. When we necked down our shop back to the one and three quarter inch running straight, we kept 51 CFM, which is a 40% loss. And when we curled it up, we kept 35 CFM, which is 27% efficiency, 73% loss. So we were maintaining a lot more, but just comparatively, at the end of the two and a quarter inch hose, when we're on the dust collector, we're pulling 95 CFM at 80% loss. Point is, is that good enough, better or worse than the, the shop back? Well, the shop back was pulling 116. So it's pulling 120% more air at the end of that hose than the dust collector was. And then when we go to the one and three quarter inch, in both cases, pipe straight, or when I curled it up, the shop back pulled twice as much air as the dust collector did at the end of that pipe. Once we start necking things down and we have that high friction cost because our ratio goes way, way up of circumference to area, pressure wins. And then I thought we'd have a little bit of fun and do some comparisons. So hook things up to my table saw and I can't really get a true CFM because I just held any over in the same spot and kind of wheel it back and forth to get an airflow measurement at where my blade is connected to my clear view. And my clear view was pulling 216 feet per minute through that slot. And then when I hooked the Rockler dust collector up, it was pulling 157, which is 72% of the flow the clear view was, which kind of shows when you're pulling much higher volume, you know, that carries through in what you can get at your tool because that's going through a cabinet. Real quick, if you're one of those people who like to hit the like button and subscribe and leave comments or even share my videos, Thank you so much. That goes a long way in helping me still be able to make these videos instead of just making commissions. Anyway, let's get back to it. So those numbers are all cool and everything, but what happens when you actually hook those hoses up to a machine and just go into an open cavity and happen to pull air? Well, I tried to kind of rig something up on my only tool I have that has a two and a quarter inch port and uh, 
I struggled. So instead, the way I'm trying to test this is a straight hose, and I made a box, cut a hole in the box. Step one, cut the hole in the box, and then cut another second hole in the box to put any on top of. We'll see how much air each one pulls respectively. I don't have a good way of like actually pulling measurements out of tools, so that was my imitation. Also, uh, I didn't measure the area, so we're just gonna go with airspeed numbers, but it was through the same opening. So the Rockler was moving at 2,992 feet per minute, and the Rigid was pulling through the small box at 3,403 feet per minute. So the dust collector was 90% um, of the speed of the shot back, or the shot back was 15% more air than the dust collector, so on the small box, it won. Now you might be thinking, okay, so it sounds like um, shot vacs always win. Why do we even have dust collectors then? Well, there is a place for high volume, low pressure. Like I said, what I have is optimized for my shop. So we got a big box and gave the shop vac the treatment Rockler's been getting, whereas we keep necking down our dust collector, let's take a shop vac and open it up and see what high pressure, low volume does in a larger volume situation. The dust collector was pulling 5,551 feet per minute through any. And then when I opened up the shop vac and connected it, the big box, the shop vac was pulling 3,130 feet per minute. So basically the dust collector was pulling 177, say 180% more air through the big box than the shop vac was. Shop vac was pulling almost half as much air. So when you are dealing with those, you know, big tools, big machines, big areas, yeah, low volume, high pressure, it wins. So I know you guys are smart folks. You're thinking about this going, well, why do we have to pick either or? Can we get the best of both worlds? Can I have a high volume, high pressure system? So that way I have the pressure to pull through these small hoses, work on my small machines. But you know, when I get some bigger machines that have four inch ports, I don't have to completely redo my shop and I have something that's gonna work on those ports as well. The answer is yes. The only system I'm aware of are the supercell systems by Oneida. They have one that has a two and a quarter or two and a half inch opening and the one that has a four inch opening. So if you want one that'll move up to the four inch ports, you'll obviously wanna get the four inch one. They are pulling around a hundred inches of water column, I think 90 something and hundreds of CFM. So they're obviously moving all the air you need at those bigger tools, but they have the static pressure needed to work on the small tools. And the way they do that, it's kind of like a super shop vac. They have three to four impellers running at 30,000 RPM all in sync, all those stages. And that's how they generate massive amount of static pressure. And the cool thing is that really changes how you do dust collection in your shop. Because when you have that much static pressure, you don't have to worry about flex hose at all. They did most of their tests running 20 feet of flex hose, which would go around most small shops. So at that point, you don't even have to worry about piping anything in. You can just drag flex hose everywhere or pipe flex hose because you have the static pressure to overcome uh, the friction. You don't have to worry about any loss. I have links to those in the description. If you're not ready for that and you got a small shop, $100, $150 shop back might actually be your best option. Just make sure to take some steps, add some filters on there. And if you're okay with a little bit more volume loss, you can also get do the dust deputies to make your filters last a lot longer, go into two stage separation. That's a whole other video. I've talked about that a few times before. But yeah, I hope you learned something, were inspired or at least entertained. And until next time, make time to make something. Do some math real quick.